Shannon Bailey with us, of yes, course, yes. co-host Whitey Pines here. Uh, Shannon, man, uh, just kind of give everybody a little brief background of who exactly you are. A man of many hats. Okay, right? yeah. Um, well, Shannon Bailey, of course, I'm from Russellville. Um, let's see, who am I? Uh, uh, the hardest question of the day. The hardest question of the day. Um, no, I, I was born and raised in Russellville. Um just um i was a i was pretty much a typical kid you know what i'm saying just i grew up just like everybody else did i feel like uh um i left russellville for a little while when i when i got older and i came back of course had kids and um just raised them there in russellville kind of still there i, I mean I, I like to get out every once in a while but yeah. i mean i guess russellville is home russellville, russellville is home, home. kentucky yeah. is home kentucky is home yep yeah. well you know, uh, I know we was talking a little bit before. Uh, you got a couple of different hats you wear, as he says. Mm -hmm. so what, what are you yeah. currently doing nowadays? Oh wow! So um, my main job, I'm a, I'm a, actually a manager at Cricket Wireless. Okay. So you know, I'm your man for all your phone needs and things like that. But um, I'll let you have the phones as long as I get the internet. All that's right. right. That's right. That's right. right. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, but I, I do that. I've been doing that for about fourteen years. 14 years um then i also decided you know to pick up a couple of little side gigs and stuff i'm um i'm ordained so i can marry people i've seen that i, seen I that. love doing that working with people and what, and what drove you to do like when did that start when did that start um so funny story uh my my best friend his brother uh they were they were we've always kind of been in a circle of hanging out and everything and he uh we we were like you know y'all need to get married you know him and his girl they were together and we just teased him about getting married and i said you know if y'all get married y'all decide to do it i will go online and i will get my license and i will be the one to marry y'all asses and um i didn't think that they were going to do it i i actually didn't think they were going to do it and they actually said okay yeah we're, we're about to do this and so i had to go get my i had to go online and do my license and stuff and um when i got my license to do it they decided that they were just going to elope so they left. Oh man! Yeah. So I went through all that to get my license, and I sat on my license for literally probably about three or four years. Because once you're ordained, you're ordained, you're ordained for life. You don't it, it don't expire or nothing. Hmm. And so then, uh, I, somebody else I knew were about to get married, and I was like, I can, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? And then I was like, I did it the first time, and I was like, you know what? This is good money. Like, <laughs> what was the first first one like? Walk me through what you felt going into that event. I wasn't nervous at all because um, I grew up, I kind of grew up, um, the way I grew, I grew up in church. So um, I always, I was always around people. I was put in front of people um, as far as singing and speaking and stuff like that when I was a kid. I was mm -hmm. maybe like nine or ten. And so speaking in front of people was nothing. It was nothing at all. Um, I've always been easygoing when it comes to doing things like that. So um, I just, I just, I found... I found like my little niche in it and I was like, you know, let's just go for this. And then word of mouth started happening. I started doing it. I, I will put my own vibe on it. You know what I'm saying? I put mm -hmm. my own spin on things and um, I wouldn't be traditional. You know, I wouldn't I, like you go to any other wedding and the priest is up there and he's like boring people to death and they sleep. And I'm like one of them people like I engage with people mm -hmm. and, you know, people just love that. And then word of mouth happened and it just kept growing bigger and bigger. Is it, I guess, obviously be easier to do couples that, you know, personally. But yeah. like, Maybe so do you, do you take time to learn about this couple before you do their wedding, kind of, or is Get them it... out. Um, I do, I do. Uh, at first I didn't. At first I was just like, you know, side hustle. I need that money. Like, I don't care what y'all you... yeah, decide y'all want to get married. That's fine. Y'all know each other. That's all <laughs> I need to know. But then it was just like, uh, the more I started taking it serious, 
uh, I was just like, you know, let me. And so I, what I do is when I get with them and I sit down with them, I, I, we have a consultation. I'm like, tell me about y'all. Tell me y'all's history. Tell me, you know, what made y'all fall for each other. And I, I go off that. And then when I go off that, what they tell me, it's, it makes it, because I write vows too. I write their vows. And so it makes I like it, that. It Fun makes fact. it, yeah. And, and if, if I'm getting married, I mean, and I come to you, like, I want to get like a custom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to use some preacher that I don't even know. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Sure, like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I customize the vows. I write them for people. And I'm like, I, I just go off their story and like, you know, just kind of do it that way. And they love it. Cool. How many have you done so far? Oh, I was counting that the other day. I've done 47 weddings. How many are still married? <laughs> some of them are some of them aren't i'm working i'm working on my i married this one couple maybe like a couple months ago and i don't guess it worked out and then she called me again yesterday she's like hey can you marry me and i was like again y'all married the same person and she's like no <laughs> so it's like you know what i'm saying uh, yeah we can do it it's funny yeah it is you need to start uh Betting them a little bit better. You need a better close rate. Yeah, well, but hey, it ain't on you. Hey, all you gotta do is make the union. Funniest right? thing That's ever. Thing. Funniest they gotta, thing. They gotta grow the garden. They gotta water it. That's they right. Gotta maintain. That's it. right. And you just giving them the seeds. That's right. My, and and here's a here's a thing that I tell people too. A lot of people are prepared and 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 ready for the wedding. But they're not prepared and ready for the marriage. God damn, that so, is fact. So they, they, people will like do all of this stuff and get into like, you know, what I'm saying what I want my wedding to be. It's about to be lit. We about to do this, and then like when it's over, everybody's got to go home. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying reception don't last forever, and you know you get home and then it's like, damn. That's a saying for a life. reason. You know, you ever heard the saying, the honeymoon's over with? Yeah. Whenever something true. starts going to status quo or it's reality true. kicks in. Mm -hmm. That's a saying for a reason. Do you think that in our culture or society, which now it's geared different, mm -hmm. but let's go back, you know, 20, 30 years, and I'm, I'm going to Harrison Bucker this, like when women were, like they grew up wanting that princess wedding mm -hmm. and fairy tales or whatever, but they wasn't never romanticizing like, what that means at the end, like right. what being a, a, a partner or a, a companion right. or a soulmate is, you mm -hmm. know, it was just all about the bells and whistles of the wedding. It was, oh, yeah. And, you know, I remember, like, look, because I don't know if y'all know, so I've been married, like, a couple times, but my I only first know one. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about the second one, but the first one we'll talk about. My my <laughs> my first wedding, I remember, uh, and it's, it was my kid's mother. She, she didn't want them. She was just like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want, and I wanted, it was crazy because I was the one that wanted the big wedding. I wanted like all of that. I, let me tell you, dude, I had live, a live band at my wedding. I had live singers. Like, I didn't play no songs or nothing like that. I had literally live singers at my wedding. And she was like, you doing all of it because I don't want none of that. Like, I, I, I'll be good with just going to the courthouse. And so, I, like, I... I did my own first wedding. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, I, but I did. I, everybody in my family sings and stuff. Like, everybody is like super talented. Yeah, y'all are real talented. Super I know, talented. I know your family. They're super. Yeah. And I feel like it ain't just music neither, though. Like y'all got y'all are talented pretty much in whatever y'all do. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Yeah, we've definitely been blessed with that. Uh, and music has always been in our family and sports and. I don't do sports. I'm not an athlete at all. No, I mean y'all got y'all got athletes, musicians. Y'all got poets. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, sure. Yeah. yeah. We got and it. then your your granddaddy probably laid you know carpet oh, yeah. for, for everybody. The late you know Charles I mean? Boyd Senior. Yes, yeah. he. I mean, he was a hustler too. He was. You know, he like, was. From, oh yeah. From sun up, sun down. Mm -hmm. He was at you know getting mm -hmm. it. So. Yeah. Yep. What What does that do? You know, in a small community like Russellville, to have mm -hmm. you know family that as well known like that how has that impacted your life it positively like you know what i'm saying because of my granddaddy every time i get pulled up by police they let me go <laughs> like they'd be like oh you're charlie's grandson <laughs> but literally and i say that jokingly but it's truth and um it, it, it when your family is well respected um when your family is is just out there no just known for like you know just being respectful of people and stuff, it makes it, you know, it really does make it a lot, a lot easier. I mean, because I, I do say that jokingly, but there has been so many times where, you know, I, I've been in, in Pickle or something and I'll just name drop, you know, Charlie's my dad, my granddaddy, and they'll be like, Charlie boy, 
and we'll start talking because granddaddy was so popular we'll start talking about him for like 20 or 30 minutes and then they don't forget what they pulled me over for <laughs> plus you can kind of bs and talk to anybody anyway so I can, yeah <laughs> somebody told me once that i can like literally walk in a room with 10 strangers and leave out with nine friends oh i believe that and what, what what about the other one though the other one he was a hater you know what i'm saying <laughs> no I, was, I don't know i probably made a friend out of him too who knows but you uh we was talking about singing and runs in your family i know you you've always done that you kind of touched on it saying you sung in, mm -hmm. in church and whatnot mm -hmm. what uh just give us a little bit of your background and background and the music okay so uh, music when i was growing up music has always been like one of them things because um i will tell you this what what got me to that um growing up like i, I know i said i had like a normal normal childhood and stuff like that but um some people say it was like growing up for me music was like a, a escape for me it was like i would uh, it doesn't matter it didn't matter what else was going on because when i was growing up um as a kid i faced a lot of challenges you know i know i was different as a kid so i i got bullied a lot got made fun of a lot um felt like i didn't belong a lot um and just just certain things and what i would do that was just my escape i would go and i just put my um at the time we had walkman's and I, I dating ourselves yeah right now. we had walkmans and then we went from a walkman to a discman and yeah. stuff like that but i would just listen to music and um and i would it just it was a certain it was certain artists and things like that that i was, would listen to and one thing about me is i never listened to anything because it was popular um i never listened to anything because because this person was popping or whatever i i like singers i like real singers um and there was people that I, I call it going to school with them. It was people that I would listen to and learn, like different things and stuff like that, different textures and different runs and things like that. I would learn stuff like that. And um, then I would just take it to, I would take it to church because nobody knew when I was little that I could sing until they gave me a song one time and I, I, I killed it. And they were like, oh man, like, and then it just kind of, it just kind of went from there. Where'd, I you, where'd you start going to church at um, and singing? My church uh, is in Russellville. It's a, it's a church called Living God, Church of God in Christ. Um, church of God in Christ, they call it Kojic. Um, uh, it's a Pentecostal church. Um, and it's actually, to this day, still the largest African-American uh, Pentecostal church in history. You know, it, it's still that. Um, and I just... I largest or oldest? The largest. Okay. The largest uh, denomination. Um, and... We went to, uh, man, I'm telling you, it's crazy because we, we would have church conventions and stuff. And what was so cool about my that, that church denomination is a lot of Christian and gospel artists were in that denomination. So when you would go, I would see them, which is what gave me um, like my knowledge on stage presence and things like that. Because I would go and I would just watch them. And it was like a lot of my heroes that I would listen to were in that denomination. So I would get I got to meet them. I got to listen to them saying I got to be in the workshops and stuff like that. So I learned all of that. Anything musical, anything I got musically, it came from that upbringing, which a lot of artists and stuff like that will tell you. R&B artists, anything like that, mainstream will tell you they got their start in church. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard that so that's, yeah. that's a kind and of... Especially like, like a lot of the greats. Oh, like, yeah. You know, like Zaytoven, you know, one of the best producers out. He started mm -hmm. playing piano in church. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. Well, I, I want to say I want to touch on something though because you was you was getting to see these in person, mm -hmm. and I think there's a big difference because if you get to see them in person, you realize they're just real people, real people, and it, it's inspirational. As in, hey, I can do that too, mm -hmm. you know, versus watching somebody on TV and idolizing them or yeah. whatever yeah. Is, is is somebody that's doing something superhuman. Mm -hmm. When when in reality, we're all just we're just we're all just the same, you know, and. Um, uh, that's what what I got in my mind, you know, in my mind, I, I locked that in and I was like, if they can do that, I can do that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And it goes for anything in life, you know, mm -hmm. if, if one man can do it, so can the next. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Something that you had to overcome in that, like, because shyness obviously wasn't it. You know what I'm saying? You always kind of naturally. <laughs> you say, yeah, like, I, I still be shy, though. Like, even now I am. Um, but. Don't so lie. what do you do? Do you just kind of, like, fight through it? I turn on, like, when I would get, literally, when I would get on, on the, I say on the stage, but it really wasn't. When I would get behind the, the mic and I would get a song or something, I would just, 
I would just turn into a whole different person. Something would literally like come over me, and I would just because sometimes I would surprise myself. I would get out, I would put the mic back on. And I was like, did I just do that? Yeah. And you know, it was. It, it's just like when that's in you like that. It's gotta come out. It, it, it comes when it comes out like and 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 that's just what it is, you know. And me, I'm gonna be honest with you. I hate this is a a, a, a thing. I hate to hear my voice. Yeah, I don't like my. Shit I either. do not like my voice. I remember, um, and I know you'll probably touch on this later. But we did some stuff together. I was gonna bring it up. Yeah, yeah and and I I loved your part. Yeah. But every time my part came on, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like but yeah. Um, That's taking it way way back. Yeah. Y'all did a song called "Fly Away." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Back in. Yeah, we was recording. Two thousand, two thousand two. We was recording in bedroom closets and yeah. all kind of shit. Yeah. Back then, so yeah. That was I mean, fun. That was fun. Man, yeah, it really was. That's the first time that that's literally the first time I'd ever recorded. Oh, yeah. First time oh, really? my voice had ever been laid on anything, and I didn't know. I, I knew about music, but vocally now, because yeah. you know, as you as you age and you mature your voice. Vocally now, because I was thinking about it the other day, I was like, if I if I sung that song now, it would sound it would be totally oh, different. Yeah, it'd be totally different. Cause Cause let's get, let's get a remix, <laughs> yeah, right, right, and we redo it, right? Because you listen yeah. to the lyrics of the song. Oh, it's dope. Um, and and um, you think about it. I was so much younger when I recorded that, and so you know you go through life experiences, oh, and the life yeah. experiences that you go through, you know those those words start to mean something. Yeah, they it seasons it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm just ready. Whenever you are, I'm ready. We can do that. <laughs> and, and that song had like a radio vibe to it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that could have been, you know, out, out of the whole album. If there was a song that was going to be on the radio, it would have been that song. I felt like that could have been it. Yeah. Yeah, we even put like live guitars and shit in it too. Yeah. Remember? Didn't yeah. Mac play that? Yeah, Mac yeah. Whittinghill. Shout out that. Mac. Yeah, Mac. The mix sounded like shit because it was probably <laughs> mixed on them two little hundred dollar monitors. But yeah. Yeah. I wish um, I actually I still have a copy of that. I do. I, I, I probably got like a box full of. Yeah, them I have a copy. Of, I have a copy of that because I want to let my daughter hear it. my music. Actually, it flows because uh, um, my daughter she's sixteen and she loves loves music. Yeah. And she um, she's a she's quite a little singer herself. She loves to sing and stuff. And she she's um. Well, Apple usually doesn't fall too far mm -hmm. from the tree. Mm -hmm. I taught my son. It's, my, I have a daughter and a son. My son will be 19, uh, although I'm telling my age. My son will be 19 um, in August, and my daughter will be 17 in July. My oldest son, I started teaching him music and stuff. I started teaching him about Michael Jackson, some of my favorites. And uh, he loved it, and then he set it down. And when he set it down, she was smaller. She picked it up. And now my daughter, for being 16 years old, can she is a, such a music love her she can tell you she and it's not even like she can tell you a song and know the lyric she she actually goes and she can tell you the writer the composer the, that's, she can tell yeah, you all I like of this that stuff. she can tell you all of this stuff. that's it's how crazy. that's how you can tell somebody is really passionate about it because oh, yeah. they you know they want to know the origins like mm -hmm. what mind she does wrote these lyrics because we used to be able to do it when we got an album i think that's something that's missing now is we could buy an album yeah. And we could open the leaflet, mm -hmm. and sometimes you'd even see the lyrics of yeah, the you song. Yeah, you see the lyrics. Where you saw the songwriters, producers, mm -hmm. any additional production credit in there where it was recorded oh, at. Yeah. If you download a song off the internet, you You'll really see don't that. get yeah. that. Right. Yeah, and I, I used to love like looking for who's singing background vocals. Because right. if you look, a lot of, like especially in R&B and stuff like that, if you look, a lot of people who sung background vocals back then are like mainstream singer, are like artists now. Mm. And you'd be sitting there thinking, I did not know that. Like, yeah. I did not know they sung. You know, so I, that stuff was just interesting to me. That's how I knew I loved music as much as I did because I, I wanted all of it, like mm. everything. So, But, yeah, I do think that, like, the way we used to record music, and then this is even at the at the home level to the professional level, music recording used to be way more hands-on. Mm -hmm. than what it is now but now with the technology and ai it's like you know your engineer is really he's nothing but a programmer that's right you know what i mean back then your engineer had to have some music theory some knowledge about you know what happens yeah and it just changed the whole process and i think it changed the final you know product <clears throat> also, for the worse also i think a lot of like music these i like i like a lot of songs but like i said before i'm i'm a person i love singers i love people who can actually sing 
And Who's I'm, some of your favorites? Oh, okay, there we go. And now you hit the question. I, I, I was ready for you to ask me that. So <laughs> here's a here's a funny thing. Some of my favorites are, um, most of my favorites are probably female singers. Um, one of my favorite singers of all time is probably Whitney Houston. She was my favorite. Um, and, uh, of course, um, I got some Christian artists and gospel artists that are my favorite. There's there's a group called the Clark Sisters. If you ain't never heard of them, you got to look them up. They are like, oh, they're amazing. <laughs> Harmonies, sick, and stuff like that. Because a lot of gospel music and stuff now has gone mainstream. Because they actually have songs with like Snoop Dogg. They got like, can I say that? Yeah, can I say like people's mm -hmm. names on Snoop Dogg, Jaded, Jermaine Dupri, like they, they... They're probably watching actually. Shout yeah. out Jermaine Dupri. <laughs> Shout out Jermaine. <laughs> um, but like, th those are my favorites. Christian yeah. groups have songs with Jermaine Dupri. Mm -hmm. And Snoop Dogg, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put you on, I'll put y'all on. Y'all be like... Is it, is it clean? I it's, mean, it's, it's clean, be... yeah. So, hey, well, real quick, mm -hmm. about Athena Cage. Sure. Uh -huh. What about her? Um, was she an influence to you at any point in time? Well, let's let's go a little bit deeper and tell us who she is first. Of okay, all. so Athena Cage, she's uh, from Russellville. Then don't get me to telling like her. I ain't gonna tell her whole biography because I don't know it. She is from Russellville. Um, she went to Russellville like high school and stuff like that, and she made it out. She she uh, made it out. Left, uh, hooked up somehow with Key Sweat. You know. Who can love you like me? Nobody. Yeah, you know, banger. Yeah, and, and we loved that because we was grinding and bumping into that song. Banger. Like, we didn't know it. All the way back to the Sportsman Club. Oh, yeah. One, and right? I remember, like, me, <laughs> I was, like, slow dancing with the honeys at the dance. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, she's my cousin, right? That's my cousin. <laughs> I don't know if she's my cousin or not, but I used to lie and tell people she was. But, I just believed you. Yeah. So, so but <laughs> when she... Uh, when she uh, when she did that, that was in, that was inspiration because I was like, man, you can really get the hell up out of Russellville and you can do something. You can you can you can make moves like that and and do that and it don't you know. So that was she was a pretty big inspiration. She was. She, she got street named after. after yeah. So. Yep. Yep. So she got a street named after, which is I'm I'm still striving to get a name, a street name. You know, I want a Shannon Bailey Way or something like that. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? If it's S. Bailey, does that count? Maybe like South Bailey? Yeah, I guess. Well, I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> um, what was the question you asked me, though? You I forgot. just, if she influenced you in any way, but you answered it, so. She did. You know, yeah. moving on. Who are three, name three, and these can be deep cuts. Okay. Anybody that was kind of influential. You said, you know, when you was walking, the days when you was walking around with that Disman or Walkman. Mm -hmm. um, three artists or three albums that was kind of. Okay, um, the first album would have been, uh, it was a gospel art, Kurt Franklin. Y'all know Kurt Franklin, right? Uh, Kurt Franklin is super mainstream now, but like, uh, he was the first. Um, the second probably would have been Michael Jackson. And the third... Hmm. The third, the third one. That's a hard one. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll make it easier for you. Not name Michael Jackson. Not name Michael. Because I knew you. I knew you were gonna throw Michael. I should have known you were gonna throw Michael Jackson yeah. in there. Uh, but name three. Not name Michael Jackson. Okay. You got Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin, of course. Uh, Whitney. I love. I love Whitney. Um, Luther. I love Luther Vandross. And Stevie Wonder. I'm. A, I'm gonna add the fourth one. Yeah. I love Stevie Wonder. I'm old school. When it comes down to music, I'm so old school to it's unreal, like for real. I feel like everybody listens. I don't know. Mm -hmm. that, that, it's just timeless. Yeah. You know? Sure, yeah. Because like, when you name like singers now that's came out in the past, we'll say 12 to 15 years, I mean, who do we got that you can say is, hey, that girl's got pipes or that mm -hmm. dude can really blow, you know, like yeah. who, who, I mean, would you? We don't, and the thing about it is we'll never have another Michael Jackson. Right. I don't care how. Like John, mean, John Legend, he holds his own, right? He's, he holds his own, but he it'll never be another Michael. There'll never be another Whitney. Like Beyonce, she holds her own, but is she a Whitney Houston? Hell no. Like, no, no, no. Um, I think Whitney's the greatest, you know. I just think that she's the greatest for, and, and, and like I said, and I don't want to stay too much on this, but like I'm just one of them people. I love singers. I love singers 
who actually you can feel the soul. You can feel anybody who who puts something out there and you can feel what they're going through. Um, it's just you. I mean, that's somebody why is, they call it soul. Yeah, you singing yeah. from the heart. You're singing from your soul. Yeah, you're singing from your guts. Like you, that yeah. that comes out, and uh, that speaks to me. Always has, you know. So, so switching gears a little bit. Let's go. What's what's next, man? What 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 are you looking forward to in the next? Say two five years. Uh, I actually want to. I want to. Um, I do. I want to record something. Oh yeah. I do. Um, because like I said, man, you know, over time your voice gets seasoned. Um, when I recorded, when I recorded with uh, Mark, I, I you had. You know, weight factors in a lot too. Like I noticed, like when, <laughs> I, used, when I used to record. <laughs> Trying to say, boy. No, no. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look at me. Like I noticed, like back in the day, man. Like I would walk around at probably you know anywhere from 140 to 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like you step in the booth after you gain about 50 pounds of that, and you say something, the control it's mm -hmm. hard. Like you got to get used to you know because you yeah. your voice is deeper, mm -hmm. your range is different. So you know stepping back in the booth after taking a hiatus. You can face a few challenges. Yeah, you know. And my, um, I have, um, so this is a, a, a fact, a factoid. I have, um, I have a scar right here. I had when I was maybe eighteen. I had a a tumor on my vocal cords. Oh sure. And um, and it was like the size of a grapefruit. That's how big it was. It stuck out. Damn. And it pressed up against my vocal cords. Um. Mm. For them to remove remove it, they had to like go in and you know anything that you're doing in there close to your vocal cords, you nick it, you can paralyze it. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember like being so terrified, you know, that this was gonna happen and um, that they were gonna uh, paralyze my vocal cords. I, I was terrified. Of course, I was 18. Of course, I'm gonna be terrified. Yeah. And um, I thought I'd never sing like again. So it probably led to a lot of gratitude as far as you mm -hmm. being able to do it. You know. Oh yeah. Period. Oh so. yeah, oh yeah. So any chance I get, like you know, what I'm saying, I remember praying um, because, like I said, I grew up in church. Now, I'm pretty sure the parts of this interview, you know, we're talking, it's gonna sound like I don't know God, but I, I, I honestly do. And I grew up in church, and I remember just, I remember like making a pact. I was like, God, I promise you, if you let me get through this with this voice, um, I, I, I promise you, you're gonna get glory from it. Um, number one and number two, I'll use it for you. And the funny thing that happened was, even though like I, I grew up listening to different people and stuff like that, the funny thing that happened was when I when I made that 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 deal with him, uh, like it was so funny because the, the voice did change. I can tell you that. And he opened my my ears were open, but they were open to to music um, that that I say would like heal people like music that were like you know if, if somebody was going through something I, I my ear turned to stuff like that and it didn't turn to junk you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying it was just like that's what i could hear and and i could hear other stuff but you know the difference between listening and hearing like i, oh, I could yeah. hear other stuff but listening and taking in it was only music that was like healing music it was music that was like you know this is something different about this you know and and so that's how I, that kind of came and I've, I've held on to that like for real I feel like that's spread across all genres and all art. You know what I'm saying? Even, even an artist that might not will have a song here or there that mm -hmm. that, that is healing. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, get that. I do. I have a I have a song. Um, I have a song that like I literally, it's like I, I listen to it all the time. Like it, and it's it? yeah. Um, if it, there's two, there's one. Um, and they're like I said, they're Christian. Uh, one is a song called "You Brought the Sunshine," um, and and it's just a, and it's a song that was is it is it from the like eighties, like I think it came out the year before I was born, and um, I listen to it, to it a lot because it gets me in a good mood. It's kind of like a kind of like a reggae beat to it. It's it's crazy. Um, I listen to that, and then uh, there's a song um, by Michael Jackson, <laughs> uh, "Will You Be There." That's like my favorite song, and. Uh, as, I don't know those t those two songs. If I listen to them, I'm good. Like, I'm good to go. The music definitely sets a mood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So y'all and 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 I'll tell you, um, 
like, as far as, like I was telling you before, like, letting music be an escape for me, like, when I was growing up and stuff, it, 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 it when I tell you that, it's, it's the honest to God truth, because I, I could just tune anything that I was around that wasn't good for me, or I was in the wrong environment or something like that, tune it out totally. I would start writing songs in my head. Mm. I would just, I would just make up songs and just, so... What 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 does a perfect day look like for Shannon Baby? Perfect day. Um a perfect day would be waking up in the morning, eating a bowl of chocolate checks. That's my favorite cereal. Um I I cannot I can't let a day go about that. If my daughter or my son is not with me, I I, I have to talk to them or I have to see them. Um see my parents, talk to my parents and literally just it's just a, a a perfect day would be a relaxing day for me where I ain't got where I don't have to do anything. I do what I want to do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, that's what I'm saying. What, that's the that's a perfect you day. Doing whatever you want to. Yeah, so. and that usually consists of like uh, watching movies, scary movies. I love horror movies and stuff like that. It's usually on Sundays. Lazy yeah. Sundays are my favorite. It's I so love bad. a lazy Sunday. Yeah. Watch movies. Yep. What What's your snack for the day? Snack for the day. Oh. uh... <laughs> I eat a lot of candy. That's right. I eat like candy, like nerds, gummy nerds, gummy bears, uh, hot tamales, stuff like that. Um, you do a lot of cooking too, and I've actually asked you before about uh, maybe you know throwing a couple of little cooking podcasts together. Or yeah, whatever. what's yeah. on the menu on that day? Uh so man, my favorite thing to cook is like soul food. My love. So food, like so food, so music. You remember about <laughs> yes. remember about two years ago or three? I don't know when it was, but like I hit you up and I was like, man, hey, what? How you do your hot water cornbread? And you gave me like a little hot yeah. water cornbread tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I I didn't learn it from that. I, I say I get it from the ancestors, but uh, to be honest with you, I just go on YouTube and look up how to make food, like for real. Like I be because my mother doesn't like to cook. My grandmother, she don't cook like she used to. My great grandmother was like the one that did a lot of cooking when she passed away, but she did all the cooking and um, and I, I I would like to say I learned some stuff from her, but I I didn't. I just go on, I go on like YouTube. I I'll have in my mind something I want to cook, and like fried chicken is like the best because you can you can do that so many different ways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, oh okay, we're gonna we're gonna marinate it in buttermilk today, and then we're gonna have a good crispy crust. You know, there's just little stuff like that, and I don't know. I just like cooking. I like being in the kitchen. Yeah, I do too. And like most people, like they say, man, I like to cook, but I don't like to do the dishes. I don't. What's bad is I don't like to do dishes neither. But that don't even factor into my head whenever I want to cook something. That's you true. know what I'm saying? Like I'll go into the kitchen and look like you know storm came through there. Mark, yeah. I'm telling y'all. Listen, this is funny. I, I'll get in my mind to cook, and I will cook. I'm talking like a big meal, and you've seen them. I posted like, yeah, y'all come and get some of this food. And when it comes down to dishes, I hate dishes so much, I will literally put pots and pans in a trash bag and throw them away. <laughs> I'll just go buy new, I will go buy new dishes. I, yeah. I've done that. Like, I don't, I hate dishes. I don't, I do not like dishes. No. <laughs> That's hilarious. I throw it's them away. Huh? Yes, I throw I them away. I mean, you can get, you know, paper, paper plates, but you can't do no paper pots. So. That's right. <laughs> I'm like, here's another interesting fact to it. She does a little aluminum, um, like, pans that you get like when yeah, you yeah. carry it with stuff like that you can you can fry food in them <laughs> i swear like i got oh, one yeah. put on stove i fried a, i fried a gang of catfish in that one time and like wow. just take it and take the grease and dump it like you ain't dirty no dishes so <laughs> the word of the day for me is factoid factoid i think that's a new one for me and you've said it a couple times so wow. that's gonna be i don't even say that though that's the funny thing <laughs> it's something i learned i think it's sitting next to this tree i'm getting like <laughs> I'm getting like <laughs> I'm getting inspiration for these words. Uh, I think this tree came from Goodwill. I love this tree. I don't know if anybody has ever said anything about this tree, but I love this tree. My grandma's not gonna be happy when she see me sitting beside it, but you know what? I love the tree. That's all right. I'm gonna hit you up on something. Uh, okay, let's do it. We had uh, we had Jeremy Rogers come on here. And this ain't even this this you might think this is a this might sound like a pointed political question, but it's really not. It's okay. just a down home question. We had we had Jeremy Rogers come on here and I asked him 
you know, what his diagnosis or what he where he saw Russellville at in five years, what he thought the potential was and some of the downfalls of Russellville. You've been a citizen of Russellville your whole life, grew mm-hmm. up in Russellville. What is it what is it to you like? And where do you see it in five years? I, uh, okay. What, what needs to change and sure, what, yeah. you know. Russellville, to me, is it is home. Um, it, it's It's been, I've seen some changes, but for the most part, I've not seen nothing like drastic, like huge or anything like that. I'd, I'd say, like, in, an, in the next few years, I'd like to see more, um, I'd like to see it become more, interactive you know well we have our square right and like to see people actually just be there you know to enjoy i I would like to see like some of the some of the the historical buildings and stuff around it i would like to see them become like places that people can just go to and just like have a good time and like be out and be sociable i i I feel like we need that after going through uh the pandemic that we did i feel like people need to get out and have a place i got look people call me for a scum i literally will go sit on the bench <laughs> on the square by myself i just sit there you know and and i'm like this this whole place needs to be utilized you know what i'm saying and people ask me you know what i'm saying if they want to get married where's a good place to go shit let's go on the square you know right. <laughs> it ain't nothing to see me on, on a summer day standing on the square marrying somebody I think I've seen, yeah probably I've have seen you doing that before, <laughs> probably yeah. have yeah um but I, just to see it grow see it progress um see people become more accepting um and that's big that's a big thing that's a big thing to be more for people to be more accepting open-minded and and just vibe with each other do you think that that's going the right way or the wrong way in in a town like Russell whether people becoming more open-minded or less open-minded uh it's hard to say um, I believe, and a lot of times you don't really know where people stand. You don't know where people stand. You know what I mean? Cause you don't know people... where people stand until you hear something they said about you. Right. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, it's like, yeah, okay. You didn't even expect that. Didn't even expect that because I thought we was. Um, but I think it's going in the right way. Um, I remember at a point in time uh, where I was kind of going through personal stuff in my life, just trying to figure out who I was, self discovery and stuff like that. I remember, like, I, I. Mm, I was, it was hard because I felt like people weren't open-minded. I felt like people would almost rather um, talk about you uh, and make up stories about you than to find out who you really are, find out what's going on, Uh, which is another reason why I'm kind of glad that I came here because I'm going to say, you know, we can, and and I've opened myself up. I I told you earlier, you know, you can talk to me, me about anything, and but I, I felt like so many people have told my story, you know, you telling your story. without my te- without me telling my story, um, and I felt like people have you know, kind of, kind of drug it a little bit, you know, to where it was like, no, that's not right, you know, let's let's, uh, so, I don't know. Back then, it, a is lot it is it hard because sometimes people that are really discreet. And don't let a lot of shit be known about them just because you might value privacy and mm-hmm. it ain't nobody else's business. Mm-hmm. Sure. So that leaves other people to make their own assumptions about what happened over here, or X, Y, Z. Yep, and you they know will. What I mean? And they will. Uh, yeah. Um, and I'm, it sucks, you know, because I've prided myself on being a, a good person, um, a person that you can always talk to and come to. I'm, I'm open minded and stuff like that. But you know that has that has bit me in the ass a couple of times, you know, <laughs> because you know it's just like you know what did I do to deserve that and and why, but you know that's just sometimes the way it is. If if people are fishing for something and you're not giving them, you know, then they're gonna they're gonna make something up. I knew, and it's crazy because I knew I found out things about myself before I knew things about myself. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> when did that happen? Because I've been living. A while and I don't remember that happening, so I don't know. It's just it was rough. Uh, like you know, and when people are more understanding now, I feel like. Uh, so like coming up the way you did in your own personal journey, self discovery, mm-hmm. in a town like Russellville, 
there was really no blueprint for you to go by. Mm -mm. And there really wasn't even nobody you could go to for advice. Mm -mm. No. So how did you manage? I didn't. <laughs> I like, and it's the honest and truth. I put them, 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 that music on that I listened to and I suppressed. Uh, and I did it until, I did it until it just became, I wasn't myself. You know what I'm saying? It was like, what quality of life am I living if I'm not being like who, honest, who, 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 honest to myself or, or who I want to be? And let's just forget about how people are going to judge this and what people are going to think about that because, you know, I live my life for me. And I, and I can literally say that, you know, there's some things that I didn't do, you know, that other kids did and stuff like that or other people did growing up. Like we were, as far as drinking and, and drugs and stuff like that, you know, I didn't do a whole lot of that when I was younger. You know, I was kind of trying to figure out other stuff about myself. And um, in my mind, I was like, this ain't fair, you know, because if, if they say what I'm going through or what I'm what I, what I'm trying to figure out about myself is bad, then is really what they doing out there good, you know? And yeah. I was like, why am I so different, you know? Right. And yeah. uh, I, I struggled with that for a long time. And I, that struggle probably ended when I was probably, probably in my early 30s. It, it followed me that long. What advice would you give to someone that's watching this that is just trying, is still going through some self-discovery of their okay. own? Um, find somebody that you can talk to. Find somebody you can trust. Don't uh, for me, holding things in it hurt me a lot. It hurt me a lot. Um, it, it just it just made me. It sh the the best thing I can say is don't don't let life shut your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like find somebody to talk to. Find somebody to relate to. Find somebody because the big thing now is is and they and they have a they have put a name on it. But the big thing now is mental mental health. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? It's a big thing now, but shit, I was I had mental health and I had issues with that when I was seventh, eighth, ninth grade. That's where it really all started. Um, because I knew no matter where I went, somebody was gonna call me a name. I knew no matter what outfit I put on, um, somebody was gonna make fun of it. I didn't fit in. Uh when I was a kid and stuff, I didn't fit in with uh with the with the black kids. Um and really didn't fit in with I, I just kind of went and y'all know because y'all was around me when I was a kid I literally was just everywhere I was friends with everybody but I, I didn't fit in you know what I'm saying and a lot of the kids that yeah but don't don't sit here and pretend like you didn't know how to dress no I knew how to dress but, uh, yeah don't you, get me you, wrong you was usually pretty fly I knew how to dress but know? other kids other other kids of where I come from didn't understand how I dressed. Yeah, uh, that's not what I was kind of like the Carlton Banks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I grew up and I grew up in the projects, but when I was a kid, Mama dressed me in like Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, and stuff like that. I don't know if his kids can be jealous, you know, things yeah. like that. Oh yeah. But like I, yo yeah, I got made fun of big time, big time. But I knew how to throw my clothes together. Oh yeah. I yeah. did. I did that. So uh, find somebody to to talk to. Uh, express yourself to don't hold it in because that stuff will get trapped in there and it will literally it, it will eat you up if you don't so that's part of my advice on that well you said it a while ago and I want to touch back on because mm -hmm. I personally known you for a long time but mm -hmm. whatever anybody has heard or you know the judgment I, I just want to say you are a good person and a good friend thank you I know that you, you know you, you would always answer or any any call that mm -hmm. one of your close friends made to you yeah. so uh, you can pat yourself on the back on it for that or yeah. i'll do it for you you know um, that's just why i was brought up to be honest i didn't you know i, I was just like you know you love everybody mm -hmm. um and i took my friend my friends were like serious to me like my friends were like my brothers and my sisters they really were and like i, I can't tell you a time that like they they didn't go through something and i was i was i tried to be there I try my hardest to be there for, just for everybody else. Because I, I would think that they would do the same for me. Don't ever let me go through something and none of my friends show up. I swear. Yeah. I'm going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to rewind just a little bit. We're going to backtrack. Because y'all was talking about Russellville, where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. We We've had some guests on here from Bowling Green, and I asked this question. So I want to ask this to you, um, just because I kind of thought about it then. What, what do you miss about the old Russellville? Oh, I miss, 
and this will get personal. I, I will tell you that. I miss, I miss my granddaddy. I do. He was Mr. Russellville to me. Yeah, uh, oh my goodness, man. I miss him so much. Uh, I miss, like, when we were young. Like, dude, when I think of him, like, when you think of people that, in Russellville that deserve some kind of statue or monument or something. Oh, yeah. He's dead. He's up there. He's up there. Um, I miss that. I miss fun i miss like you know it's, it's so different now when we were younger we all used to hang out of town and stuff like that y'all remember that oh, yeah. at hardy's and stuff like that and now like you know i'm i miss hardy's hardy's yeah. ain't even there anymore. it's not even there no more <laughs> uh I, I miss that 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 camaraderie of, of having like people around like you had like it was more it wasn't it wasn't like a back then it wasn't like a time it was like a vibe it was like yeah. <clears throat> it was it was just amazing i mean we would go to different people's houses and stuff. Nobody ever came to mine, but I went to y'all's. Like, I did. <laughs> Nobody ever came to my house, but I sure went to y'all's houses. Well, you would go out and figure out something to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, whoever, no plans. whoever yeah. you run into is where you yeah. run into. And I remember, like, you know, well, uh, something that I'll never forget. Um, this is on Jordan, because he don't oh, know I'm about to say this, but I'll never forget, like, I used to go to his, to his house I had a damn dog named Dagger. <laughs> and Dagger that was... That little dog? Yeah, yeah Dagger will always love you when you go in the house. But if you try to leave the house, he will bite the shit out of you. <laughs> and I remember every time I would be like, man, I don't want to go home. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dagger going to bite me. <laughs> like, you remember that, though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember dude. Dagger. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's, that's yeah. throwback right there. Yeah, very much throwback. But that's what I miss that, just the camaraderie, the people hanging out. You know, out stuff. that's funny because that's what the last person we said pretty much said the same thing. It was like, the thing that I miss the most is, is the people, you mm -hmm. know? Because um, we had fun. Yeah. We did. I knew, I knew when to back, I knew when to leave, though. Y'all was get to having too much fun. Like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Because <laughs> some of that stuff I couldn't keep up with. Uh, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't get into no car surfing or nothing like that. I didn't do none of that stuff. I just didn't do it. Yeah. But I heard it was fun, so you no, know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, oh, man. Oh, well, it's about that time of the show. If you've watched one of these, uh, we we always like to ask. This is the Wise Words podcast. So, mm -hmm. do you have any wise words? Any favorite quote that you would like to share that you kind of live your life by? Yeah. Can I? Can I? Can I break the rules? Can I do two? Yeah, do I got time? Yeah. Well, my first one is definitely not a quote, but it's a Bible verse. Okay. That's, um, that's a go. For it's, me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And that's, that is so, that's so real. That I, I live by that because you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, anything you put your mind to, uh, you know what I'm saying? If you have any kind of like relationship with God or, or if you have any kind of prayer life or anything like that man you can literally do it I ain't never I ain't never wanted to do something and didn't do it and, and couldn't do it I, I believe in that wholeheartedly so I can do all things is my favorite and then probably my second one would be um, turbulence is the price you pay for flying high I like that one I love that one uh, Turbulence is the price you pay for flying high. So many people want to go and be elevated and go to the next level and stuff, but you're not gonna get up there and it mm. be easy. You're gonna yeah, have that's, some. That's yeah. You're gonna that's have some cool. turbulence. You're gonna have some. You're gonna have some some things like that, and you can't you can't give up. You know. I get the concept, mm -hmm. but I've never heard it in that quote. No, but it, it makes so much sense. Yeah. When you switch, when you change, when you're switching levels, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's my favorite. I live by it. I do. I really do. That's my favorite. I like it. I like it. Um, do you do, you do much reading? <laughs> no. <laughs> you read the Bible. That's what you I read. I read Bible right? app. I let the Bible. I, <clears throat> What's your favorite book of the Bible? My favorite book, Proverbs. I saw his, I saw his question. Yeah. So, so Proverbs. <laughs> uh, that's Solomon, right? Solomon? Yeah, King Solomon, or isn't it the like Proverbs is the story of He's don't give me Psalms. Don't give me oh, Psalms. Okay, my thing Psalms. Look, don't get me in trouble because okay. my grandma will give me. <laughs> I know, I know what I'm looking for in the Bible when I go to it. But I thought you were talking about the Song of Solomon. 
The Song of Solomon, that's that's in the Bible. If I'm not mistaken, I think they'd be doing some stuff in that chapter, like, for real, but... I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, we got, I got another show I'm bringing you up. We're going to go down them rabbit holes. Well, let's go. I know you probably got some of them. Well, hey, I, I'm going I'm to go on a rabbit hole real quick. Let's go to the rabbit what's, what's your favorite or most believable conspiracy theory? It damn show ain't that we came from monkeys. <laughs> I, I, that, that's the one thing that makes me so mad is when people say, y'all, we evolved from monkeys. Cause I'm like, dude said, if we came from monkeys, why are they still monkeys? Yeah, like, why why didn't they change um, I think the new thing is that it was we were crossbred with mon- aliens, crossbred with monkeys, and that's us. I came. That's the new. I became. I came from my Cadillac from Africa. Is where I came from. <laughs> this is how I feel about it. I ain't come from no monkey. Um, no conspiracy <coughs> theory. Uh, well, I'm starting to have my own kind of little conspiracy theories about this whole COVID thing. Starting? Yeah, I am. Cause I'm, I'm just so slow. I listen to everybody else, and I'm like, okay, you might be right about that. Like this is, but yeah, I'm. I don't know how I feel about the whole COVID thing when it happened. Um, Definitely a rabbit hole. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a rabbit hole. So rabbit you think hole. it was just a money grab or a, like a social experiment or what? Both. Yeah, I you know when you definitely you can't deny it was a money. Grab. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I won't say money. I'm gonna say power grab. Yeah, it was but more of a power grab. It was money too because look at the numbers and look what Pfizer made off them vaccines. Well, yeah, that too. That, yeah. When you when you when you stack the numbers up, it was the largest money grab in the history of mankind. Like, yeah, I see it. there is not like nothing else made that much money. In that short of time frame. Well, and, then back and it also hurt all small businesses so the larger corporations could mm-hmm. keep running and, and yeah. stretch their profit. But yeah. That's and then you think and then you think about like, you know, population and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, when 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 it came, look who all got sick from it and and then passed away from it. Yeah. Look who's still here. When we, and, you know, and and you know, I, I to be honest, I had it. I had it probably about two or three times. First time yeah, I had it, everybody had it. Yeah, the first mean. time I had it, <laughs> somebody's over. Going, uh, first time I had it, uh, it was it about it, it about knocked me out. Like I, I, I think almost I had it here. twice. Yeah. And the the second time that I officially had it, uh, I lost my taste. For I like, did too. For like. That was scary as shit, yeah. man. Because I like food, and you, you can't <laughs> taste nothing. And then you start wondering, man, am I ever going to get this back? And ever since I had it, Mountain Dew don't taste the same to me at all. Dog, I was doing... <laughs> I swear, Mountain Dew don't taste the Listen, same. Listen, dude, I was dipping my fingers in gasoline. <laughs> and trying to, I, like, like, I was trying to... I believe like, man, it. Finna, I believe it. I stick my head over a... Uh, like, I would boil Vicks on the stove, mm. stick my head over it, and inhale it or whatever, and... My no back, avail. my it, it, my back hurt me the last time I got it. I was like, "This is what's and like and then like, I don't know, but I I don't know. Like I'm cool with going down rabbit holes, but if I go in too deep, yeah. Because my let me tell you, it's the funniest thing ever. My my stepfather, he um, I don't know if you ever met my stepdad, but he uh he watches. He he's he's down in his back right now, so all he does is watches. Fox News all the time. He, that man watches like Fox News, and he's so knowledgeable. I, there's there's nothing that he's ever said that I'd be like, you don't know what he's talking about. The, the man be right all the time, and like so a lot of a lot of the not conspiracy theories, but a lot of the things that I've always thought went one way. If I sit down and listen to him, he he'll make you think. You know what I'm saying? So hell, maybe he need to be on this show. I like talking to people like that. He yeah he he might let you say something. He might let you put a word in. Who knows, but. but you know, I think there's always arguments to be made for both sides of it any. Is. Yeah. You know, there's always three sides of the story: my my side, your side, and then the truth. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But I don't know. It's just a random question that kind of popped up. It That's wasn't cool. a planned That's a question. One. That's so. a good one. Um, but yeah. Mark, what? Okay, so let me ask you a question. Oh goodness. <laughs> no, it's good. Uh, when we gonna when we gonna do a song again? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had some I thought I had some profound, but that's that's that just came. Mark is um, it's so funny that um, we all we've all known each other for like a really long time, 
And uh, about five, six years ago, I moved into my place over here. I, you know, I live next door to a I, I live next yeah. door to his granny, uh, Miss Annie, and uh, I love her so much. And I, uh, she's just a sweetheart. She's such a sweetheart. I go to the door and I talk to her all the time, and and uh, I love her. I just want to put that yeah. out there. Just, you know, she's a sweetheart. If y'all have ever had any, known anybody with dementia, that's like the worst thing to watch somebody go through, yeah. man. You know, that'll make you not want to live to be yeah. 90 something. I, I remember, old. like, cause but yeah, you, you've been, I'll just say you've been a hell of a neighbor because, you know, my granny don't live there by herself. Yeah. You know, but I would just say you've been a hell of a neighbor. I appreciate it. I, you know? I, I bet I do because I'll break out. Like, it's it's funny. I, I will break out in song and it, I'll be forgetting that we live that close to each other. And I'll break out in song like 11, 12, 13. One o'clock in the morning, I'm talking like I'd be belting out songs, and I'd be like, I forgot Miss Annie's over. She probably, she probably like, I wish she'd shut the hell up, go to sleep. Uh, She probably has heard, yeah, some crazier shit than whatever you're saying. (laughs) Probably so. You know what I'm talking about. I so yeah. yeah. (laughs) But yeah, it's it's this is such a uh, a cool thing to do. I I had when I first saw uh, this platform, I was like, I gotta go on there. I might not have shit to say. I might not have nothing to talk about, but. I'm going on there. We're going to find something to talk about. Yeah, we know you got something to talk about. We'll find about something to talk stuff. about. And one of the biggest things, like, um, one of the biggest things that I do want to say before um, is I want to, like, I want to talk about um, a big a big thing in my life here lately has been forgiveness. Like, that's a, a big thing for me, man. I know it's kind of off subject. But when I was uh, when I was growing up, I was, I was of course I was talking about my stepfather uh, just then. But when I was growing up, man, me and him did not have the best relationship. And I know how it can be, you know, when when you know somebody is not your father. Uh, I don't know some people out there have gone through it. Uh, when you know somebody is not your father, you know what I'm saying, not your biological father, and you feel like you know their step parents kind of hard on you stuff like that. I went through like a lot of that when I was growing up, man, and I'm. Not gonna believe this, but I'm but I'm 42 years old. He was a lot older than us growing up. I was. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wait, <laughs> now how old are you? I'll be 40 in August. Yeah. Okay. Not gonna say. All right, <laughs> but I'm 42 years old, and our relationship growing up and stuff, it was not good. I did I did not have a really good childhood when it comes to that. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, cause and I want this to be public because you can you can do it. Um, forgiveness is so big for me now you know what i'm saying because we don't know we don't know from one day to the next what what's going to happen to us you know mm-hmm. we don't know that or we, the people around or us the people around us you know what i'm saying and the state of the world today you can you can go to sleep happy and wake up tomorrow and be depressed or you can go to sleep that's the algorithm and stay asleep you know mm-hmm. and uh you know so i, I it's important forgiveness is important because after that many years of being on not good terms and stuff Finally, we are like there. Like we're there to where, you know, I talk to him when I need to. I go to him and stuff like that. I have a great relationship with my, my biological father and my mother, but my stepdad. I just want that to be out there because I want people to know forgiveness is important and you can do it. You can do it. It's so heavy to carry that stuff with you. It is. You know? It is. It's, it's usually such a wasted emotion too. So mm-hmm. it really is. And it turns real. into resentment, and mm-hmm. when you look back on it. Um, can you forgive somebody and still not fool with them? You know yeah, I mean? hell yeah, you like, can. You I'm, I'm, big, I'm big on that. Yeah, like, you supposed to. I can forgive somebody, but that don't mean that I got to fuck with you on Yeah, you know yeah, you got to. You Okay, you all right, so you can forgive somebody for some shit, but you, but you, can't, you don't need to forgive. When people say forgive, don't forget, mm-hmm. because you can forgive them, and, and really, t- t- truly, Forgiving somebody is to help yourself mm. because yeah, it, it. if it's somebody that you need to forgive, I guarantee them to you, they sleeping real good. You the one that's like yeah. laying there like they want they want you to forgive them so they can do it again. Period. Right. <laughs> and so you know, I, I feel like forgiveness. Is, you got to remember, you can't forget. You got to remember number one because it's a learning experience. Because you ain't gonna get me again. That's just the way it is. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll forgive you. I'm gonna excuse you this time, but you you know that's. Oh, <laughs> cutting into it. So yeah, uh, man, I just seen the other day. Where before I say that, uh, I mm-hmm. want to say this. So the reason we kind of started this podcast is to kind of give 
for two reasons to inspire the people watching it mm-hmm. um you know give them some wisdom and show them that we're all kind of like we started about the music earlier we're mm-hmm. all just normal people and we can accomplish whatever we set out to do right and everybody's kind of got their own story mm-hmm. um so that's that's one reason and the other reason is you know to give everyone a platform to tell their story right yeah. i think it helps you know, to kind of get it off your chest. Is there right. is there anything else like we used to talk about forgiveness? But is there anything else like that Shannon Bailey would like to set the record straight about? Oh, when it comes to so many things. You and your wife. <laughs> oh, to be honest, I just I just as far as not really setting the record straight or whatever, but um, I'm just a person that I'm open. I'm open hearted. I'm open minded. Um, I don't see, I don't see people. I guess the way other people see people. Um, I don't see color, of course. I don't see gender. I don't see none of that. Like I, I just, I don't. I'm a person, literally. That I, I see hearts. I see your heart. I always say this is funny. I see hearts, not parts. But it's true. <laughs> I, I just see people by by their heart, you know. And 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 one of the biggest misconceptions is it's so funny. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and it's 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 nobody's. Of course, now I'll never mention names or anything, but I'm gonna say this. But you know, people, people like me, uh, like very sociable people and stuff like that. Yeah, it's so funny because I could you know, with social media and stuff, you can literally say hi to somebody, and then they cringe up and get uncomfortable. Like, why well, is this dude saying hi to me or whatever? that's like something I hate, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm literally a person, I'm a people person. I like to meet people and I like to talk to people and, you know, just get to know. I like, I like to know other people's stories, you know what I'm saying? Cause I like to be able to tell my story. I always said that when I retire and I get older, I want the day I, just, I want to go to the airport and I just want people watch because you see different types of li- like you see different walks of life. Walmart, yeah, that's not say, good you enough. Go Walmart there. ain't good enough. <laughs> Cause look, cause I go to Walmart every day. <laughs> I'm to Walmart literally every day, and I know everybody's story. Hell, they they you know I don't get bored looking. You know I won't go to the airport. Yeah, but but that's what it is. Biggest misconception is get to know me. I, if you get to know me, you'll know real quick that like I've had so many people tell me, you know what, you ain't nothing like I thought. You know somebody told me that you know this and that. Get to know me. That's the biggest biggest thing. I, I'm I'm sitting in a room with. Three gentlemen right now that I've known pretty much all my all my life, pretty much or teenage life, and I'm pretty sure they can all tell you and can agree that I ain't never. Well, you know what I like about this is like, man, I, I can't honestly tell you the last time I seen you, but you know we sit down and, yeah. and pick up just like just like we left off, you know. Yeah. And I, I think that's important with friendship. That's my type of friends. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to talk. Yeah. Every day, mm-hmm. week, or even year, you yeah. know. But when we see each other, it's, it's, it's always love. I look different than when I was in school and stuff. I look different now. Yeah, mommy, you got a beard. Got that beard and stuff. You got a beard. I'm going bald though. Look, <laughs> this is like crazy. I remember when I when I first met you or whatever, you had the uh, the little twist, the little mystical. No, well, not just because he had the fat ones, but you had the, you know what I'm saying, the little braids. Did I really? Yeah, the little bowl cut braids or mm. whatever, something going mm. on. Yeah, that that was back in the day. Yeah, so. it was. A lot of that stuff is like hidden now, though. Yeah. If you look at like, if you around. look at like the things that we wore back then and stuff, that stuff is like coming back. And, yeah, and you it's know, it's, we're old. Yeah. It's coming back around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I still be wearing it like it's brand new. Like, I'd be like, shh. Got out the closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was closet. cool back whenever you was younger, but and that's coming back to be cool again, but you're not. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and my daughter will tell me that real quick. Yeah. She my daughter is so outspoken. Gracie is outspoken. She I'll do something and she'll be like, That's why you ain't got no friends. Like she will literally <laughs> tell me and I'm like, Damn, hey, my kids are the most honest. brutal. If you want to know something, you know. She's brutal. She knew I was coming today and she said, Dad, don't be don't don't make me look bad. <laughs> So great. I'm trying not to make you look bad, child. But she's she she tell me don't be talking about me and stuff. So mm, yeah. that's all Gracie gonna I, I, get. I know how that goes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but hey, I'm come back full circle. Let's uh, go. you said something earlier about your son put the music down and then your daughter picked it up. Uh-huh. What what's your son doing now? Uh, Jaden. He uh he goes to he's in college. Yeah. Yes, he's in college. He goes to uh, Kentucky Christian and he plays ball there. 
Well, I yeah. thought so. I he's thought a so. he's a big tall dude. I'm Where'd he to... get that from? <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, he's he's uh, his his I believe like my baby. Well, I would wager he got the basketball skills from my baby mama. Okay, no. My... No, here just no. My baby out. mama was at. She played basketball and stuff when she was she, did, she was younger. Mm -hmm. She played basketball and stuff, and um, so I, I think he got inspiration everywhere. Like I, I didn't play ball and stuff. Like I lied to people and tell them I taught them everything. No, you know. but you had cousins that, that played multiple I, yeah, different yeah. levels of ball. Yeah, you know, yeah. so I wanted him to go into singing. I wanted him. To, I wanted them to sing because I my thing was I wanted to make the Jackson Five when I, I was like when I get old and I have five kids all of them kids is gonna be singing and they're gonna make me rich I'm gonna be like Joe Jackson and they're gonna make me rich and Gracie come out and, and my daughter she ain't, ain't even singing none of this stuff that I want her sing she emo as hell really yeah she be listening to like I don't even know the artist the TikTok artist stuff and I be like no baby sing you know Brandy Monica you know stuff like that <laughs> she no nah, she's not doing it. Mm -mm. But you know, it it just be it is like it. It's like it sometimes. So I seen a post on social media. I can't stand you, Jordan. There, there's it. actually two. Though. You made me think of the other one. Oh. I was gonna say that. <laughs> Go. So so uh, apparently you got a note on your car, unexpected. Uh, some some news today. What happened? What happened? I, okay, so I, I get I go into <laughs> IGA the other day, and. I come out and there's a note on my car that says, I'm pregnant, call me. <laughs> like, what would you do if you got that note? I'm pregnant, call me. I'd look around, see if anybody was looking, and then I'd wad it up. So I took the note off my like car. It never happened. I took the note off my car and I stuck it on my son's car. <laughs> it worked. Why I think it's so funny is because I've seen that. I've seen a, another post that says, like, three days ago, it was like, I'm going to start. Going around the parking yeah. lot and putting this on people's cars. Yeah, cars. and it's, people so, are doing it. Yeah. But that wasn't what I was really going to ask. Okay. But you made me think about it when you laughed about it. All right. Uh, so I seen that you were thinking about starting a podcast. This is true, yes. Yeah. Um, First of all, I want to say, and I'm not saying it because I'm sitting here, but, like, y'all was my inspiration. I was like, these dudes are just sitting here talking to people and, like, I could do that too. Like I would talk to people, and then I was like, maybe I'm gonna ask them if I could be like a co-host one day or something. Let me just let me just hop on there one day when Whitey got some shit to do. Like maybe me and George, could, you know, I ain't trying, you know. And then I was like, you know, it would be so interesting to do a podcast to talk about everything and nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not like you know, there's so many people out there that that that. They're just they'd sit at home and they're nosy. Like I want I want people to like if they're gonna sit at home and be online or whatever, listen to listen to this, listen like take a listen to this and stuff like that. Um, it's attention spans, it, man. Like people just you know their attention spans just ain't there. I blame yeah. COVID. COVID got everybody jacked up. Nah, it was way before that. <laughs> it was yeah yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I, this is something that I'm interested in, and I've started to li to listen to to podcasts and stuff like that. And I will say like. Y'all, y'all did kind of inspire me because when I saw that, I was like, "Man, I got to get on that." Like, I got to. That's what's um, Hopefully, hopefully, we inspire some other people too. That's what it's about. Um, what, what, what's yeah, the other man, part? We get a, we get a wide enough camera, man. We can start. We can throw a panel together one day. You know, yeah, so and like, yeah. hey, we got a place you could rent too. You know, yeah, if you need yeah. if you need to shoot a podcast yeah. or anybody else wants to. Yeah, I, I can I keep the tree though. Yeah, Can I keep no, the tree here? No, I'll let no, the tree no. stay for mine. I promise. I gotta talk to talk to old buddy on the. Other <laughs> side about that. I love this tree. I keep going back to it. I know I ain't probably ain't supposed to, but I just keep going back to it. <laughs> it's just. So, uh, you said you've been listening to some podcasts besides ours. Which which one's your favorite one? Because I know ours has got to be the favorite. No, it is. It is actually. <laughs> um, can I? Is is it okay for me to say which one? Is? I don't want to be biased, but I'm gonna tell you, tell you which one is my favorite oh, one. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear y'all's. Tell us. Mikey Lee. That one was my favorite one. What did you like about it? Because that dude is so... Let me tell y'all. The nostalgia. That, and then that dude is so... He is so laid back and chill till it's not even funny. Like, that dude has always been that way. And I don't yeah. know. I was the nostalgia of it, listening to it. Um, and there's no way you could have ever had a legitimate beef with Mikey Lee. There's no way. Or you. Like, there's no way. And, you know, I always... I love people... And I, I sit down, actually last night, and I listened to that. And there was parts that I laughed at 
parts that I shouldn't probably shouldn't have laughed at, like the whole you know car server incident. But if you didn't know him, do you think but you would feel? The I same wasn't way? around him when he did that, neither though. So that was my first time kind of hearing his side of that when he talked. I heard it. the story before. Yeah, I, I, I heard. Yeah, it. I heard about it when he did it. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's fucked. Up. I was like, who does that? Like car surfing? Like what you hanging on to? But that that's my favorite one. Um, there's another one. Um that I like to listen to, uh, and it's a, I can't, I, I didn't plan on coming in here to talk so much about Christianity and stuff, but there's a, but there's sometimes a it, it pops up, you know, yeah. but, um, there's a, there is a, um, gosh, and I cannot think of his name now, it's left me, but, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, a minister, and I like to listen to his podcast, and it just, it just brings things to reality, because, you know, now it's almost like, you know, when you when you hear about Christianity and stuff, it's it's not so spooky, and it's not so you know what I'm saying it's it's heaven or hell or total you know this and that it, it's it's a lot of life you know they a lot of them podcasts and things like that they they teach you about life and how to live life because it's hard if you don't have something to stand on mm-hmm. if you don't have something to believe in life can get hard it really can so you know it's just some things like that man. especially what you, what you brought up earlier what I call it. Man, I think the algorithm is like such a big deal now. Because like you said, you know, somebody can go to bed in one mood and they wake up and they hit that algorithm wants them to be sad that day. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be sad that they're day. Be sad because that social day. media is such a presence and people are so emotionally invested mm-hmm. in it. These Whoever controls the algorithm can dictate your emotions That's true. for the whole day. Can I, can I, I'm going to give a little bit of advice that I've uh, listened to on this uh, topic. Mm-hmm. First of all, you're not supposed to, you shouldn't pick up your phone for the first 30 minutes to an hour that you're awake. And that's because you don't want the first thing you do to be filtered in by what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And before you do that, you need to think, practice gratitude. <laughs> Write down five things you're great, grateful for. Mm-hmm. So... You know, you're starting off your day with gratitude I'm instead of do that. instead of issues. Me too, because it's know? it's the truth. Because the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I get on my phone, and you know, like it's the worst. I mean, I do it too. It's I'm the not, worst. Yeah, it's the worst thing you can it's do. It's the worst. My eyes don't even act right when I first wake up in the morning. You know, you wake but up. What and I feel like, like kind of, what I feel like I'm looking for is harmless, though. Like, when, when I pick up my phone in the morning, I'm like, oh, damn, did Kentucky get that recruit last night? Or did, you know, whoop de whoop That's you. Me is not so much. I'd be like, oh, gosh, it's, it's terrible. Well, what happened while I was asleep? Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going we to go with that. Yeah, we're going to go with that. <laughs> some hate mail or something yeah, the next It'd just be like, I, and my eyes don't even be working right. I wake up like, well, my eye be like, oh, really? So, it's happening. Like, and, so, so my challenge to, to you to you and everybody watching is for the next week wait 30 minutes before you pick up your phone when that's you wake a good up. challenge that really is yeah i'm gonna do it you gonna do it i'm gonna do it i don't believe it. i'm, I'm gonna, gonna do it though I'm, a, I'm on it i'm gonna do it that's that's good man for real uh well hey i think it's time for the rapid fire section you familiar with that? Yeah, let's go. See, he, he's been watching yeah uh all right are you a morning person or a night owl Night owl. Dark liquor, clear liquor. Dark liquor. Ooh, I'm lying. I'm lying. Clear liquor. <laughs> clear. I'm bad night. Go ahead. <laughs> um, go to karaoke song. Very superstitious. Writings on the wall. Yeah. Taylor Swift, Madonna, Sexy Red. You got fuck one, marry one, kill one, go. I'm I'm definitely. Can I say fuck? Oh, I'm gonna go with something bad. I'll fuck Taylor Swift. Who else? Madonna. Madonna, she got to go. I probably kill her. <laughs> sexy Red, you got marry. I, I guess I'll marry Sexy Red, yeah. <laughs> Your life's going to be shit. Yeah. <laughs> you fighting a murder case, married to Sexy Red, <laughs> fucking Taylor Swift. Yeah. Taylor Swift will get it. That's like the, uh, <laughs> you didn't throw a little Nas X in there, so that's good. That's good. <laughs> Man, that's but good. like, I don't, 
I don't even see that though when I, I know you when don't. I talk to you. Man. I know you don't. No, it's for real. Man. You're 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 like and I always have been. You're bro to me. That's right. You know what that's mean? right. So, and that's how it is. So cool. That's the. Don't let me hang on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was waiting on another. I was waiting on another question. I'm ready to answer. He All probably right, done though. No, no, no. I ain't done. Um, <laughs> this is a good. This is a, a different one too. So, if you were if you were a breakfast cereal, what would you be? Chocolate checks. <laughs> I would be chocolate checks all the way. Yeah, because I know you wouldn't call me no lucky charm. <laughs> no, I, I would be chocolate checks. So, would. what's the difference in chocolate checks? What separates it from Count Chocula? Or... Ooh, chocolate checks is like okay, you got like regular checks mixed in it, and then chocolate checks. You ever you know the Nest Quick powder you put on your chocolate? Mm-hmm. It's some of them are covered in like that. And that's fire. Because then when you get done eating cereal, guess what? You got chocolate milk. (laughs) Boom. Well, that that kind of was your question. Favorite favorite season? Fall is my favorite season. I love fall. It's my favorite. Who's in your, uh, who'd you listen to on the way here? Who'd I listen to on the way here? Nobody. (laughs) I'm going to be honest with you. It was straight silence on the way here. Hmm. Because I was nervous about being on camera. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, Lord, just let me get. I can tell you who I'm gonna listen to on the way back, though. Uh, on the way back, I'm listening to Stevie Wonder, literally his whole collection. I love it because I like to belt it out and sing when I'm driving down the road. Favorite horror movie? Halloween. Michael Myers. Lie and live for a hundred years. Tell the truth and live for only a day. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it lie. <laughs> I. I'm gonna tell it last. Um, a hundred years worth of lies, though. You can't tell the truth. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. But you're gonna live for a hundred years, but you can't tell the truth. No, I'm gonna. You can only tell the truth. I can't take these answers back, cause ain't nobody else ever took their answers back on this, have they? But ain't nobody. I ain't never asked nobody nothing like that. I thought, okay. I, I would tell the lie. I would. Uh, no, I would live. I would tell the truth and live. But what is it again? <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> I was good till he laughed over there. What is it? Lie and live for a hundred years. Speak the truth and only live for a day. I'm going to speak the truth and I'll live for a day. Because I really don't want to live 100 years. Tell them <laughs> lies, too. Think yeah. how much confusion that yeah, would sow you for 100 years. I can't live another 100 years. years. I, I just can't do it. This is the longest uh, rapid fire section, but I got another one for you. Go. I uh, like these. Favorite, favorite cartoon? Favorite cartoon? Uh, I like the old school Ninja Turtles. All right. Be all about right. Rocksteady, stuff like that. I love that. Yeah. First celebrity crush. My first celebrity crush. And I'm, 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 I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. I'm scared. Oh lord. My but, uh, just be honest. Who first celebrity crush? My first celebrity crush was downtown Julie Brown. You remember her? Yeah. You don't? Do you? I remember her. Uh, I don't. I'm saying my first. MTV. She was an MTV VJ a oh, long, long time ago. My first. Uh, you remember Elvira? <laughs> <laughs> Late night Elvira. Yeah, I yeah. remember Elvira. That's when I that's when I figured out what certain things do <laughs> and how men react. I tell you things. who my celebrity crush is now. Who? Pete Davidson. No, I'm just <laughs> Pete you know, Davidson. I I like uh, the guy that plays Thor. I I love that dude. Uh, Helmsworth or Chris something. Hemsworth. I love yeah. Thor. Yes. Yeah. Pete Davidson is a hard second though. <laughs> Oh, did, you, did you go to the when he was in Scotland? No, <laughs> no. I heard it. Was it good? I don't know. Oh. I, I, I heard something, but I don't want to be on here saying what I heard. But yeah, what'd you hear? I heard it was terrible. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard something. People was loud and, and heckling and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I don't know. Favorite restaurant? White Castle. What's the best rex- Mexican restaurant in Russellville? Because <laughs> we got like four or five now. We have a lot. Uh, the best Mexican restaurant in Russellville is that damn little food truck. It's a food truck called, called El Polo Loco. The red one. Yes, yep. it's my favorite one, hands down. Favorite donut. Favorite donut is a donut hole. Yeah, those are good. Those are, are, are Russellville donuts not the best fucking donuts in the world? They are, but that lady is so rude. Like she mean. <laughs> really? Every time you go in there, she be like. 
She can watch this. She's, she's watching. She's so mean, though. You gotta think, though, she's probably seen some shit, though. She probably has seen she's some shit. She's from, like, uh, Cambodia or some shit. You know, probably had to cross rivers to get here just to serve you them donuts. She ain't trying to put up with no shit. I can, I, I can only imagine what my next donut haul gonna be dipping Like, in. she had to pay Rambo $50 to drive her across the river just to get, you know, like... I, you're not mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not mean. I'll take that back because I don't know what my donut haul gonna be dipped in when I go next time. <laughs> He's over there cracking up. He loves me. <laughs> yeah, we got a kid on. We got a kid on he's the set. So like, I'm calling everybody yeah. out because we got. Can I do? We got a kid on the set, and he's, yeah. he's over cracking up. We'd be lucky they don't call child services yeah. on us. And then the we, we get done. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's too funny. Like I love it. I should have bought my daughter. My, my daughter would took the interview over. If she had a came. She would have been sitting right here. Yeah. Daddy, you lying. You lying. I'm like, no, I'm not. He said he want to be a director, so I had to put him in the director's chair today. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I've known your daddy forever. For a long, long time. How long is a long time? A long time. Wasn't much older than you. Yeah, for real. Jordan is the man. Yo, you all got it. Your daddy is major business. Well, Shannon, is there anything that you want to touch on before we wrap this Did up? Did I miss something? No, I'm just kidding. No, I just um, want to give you last chance to... No, like, this has been a blast. Like, yeah. I've had a great time, and I've enjoyed telling, you know, kind of like my my background. Can I give some shout-outs? Can I do it? Yeah, yeah. go I'm ahead. Shout out my, uh, <laughs> I'm going to shout-out my mom, my dad, my brother, my uncle, my cousin, <laughs> my son. I love you, Jaden. I'm going to shout-out Gracie. I love you, Gracie, because she's at home right now. Um, R.I.P. Charlie Boyd. Our, my granddaddy. I love, yeah. I love granddaddy. And uh, my uncle, um, what y'all call him? I call him Uncle Lano, but y'all call him something different, don't you? What's I call Lano. I call him Lano. Some people call him Ace. Yeah, Ace, Ace Hole. He's Lino. Funny story about Lino. We were little, uh, we were younger, and uh, of course we all grew up church Pentecostal. And Lino used to get on the uh, the organ. The, the Hammond B three organ is my favorite instrument. I love the Hammond organ. Yeah. And he used to get on the organ and like uh, he would play uh, dun 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. And I'll get in the microphone and say, push it good. And my grandmama called us one time. We was doing it at church, and we got in trouble. He probably don't remember that, but I do. But that's that's a funny story. But I, all my family and stuff like that, I tried to I tried to get a hold of some of them so I could have an entourage when I came so we could do make this legit. And they all had something to do. So. That has been an all-night affair. It probably would have. Through. But yeah. I appreciate y'all having me on. This has hey, been man, amazing. I appreciate you coming. Through. This man, is amazing. I'm not going to leave you hanging. Come on, once, once we get uh, Once we get... Some traction, we're going to bring you back on, too, though. Cool. You know what I'm saying? So, everybody share the episode if you made it this long. We really appreciate it. If you made it this long, we appreciate it. Y'all share it, please. (laughs)